please welcome Mr. Neil Davis. Okay, uh, thank you very much. Uh, yes, so, <laughs> well, I'll start. Um, so yes, my name is Neil Davis. I'm the director of the Gump Station, the University of California, Berkeley, uh, on Morea, where I've been for 17 years, a long time ago when I was in Oxford. Um, the, uh, I'm also a senior fellow at the Berkeley Institute for Data Science, uh, which, as you'll see, has become quite relevant to the, to the work we do here in, in the islands. So t today, I, just over the next 15 minutes, I can't get into too much detail, but I, I, I'll try and give mainly for those who don't know uh, French Polynesia terribly well, a, a sense of the research uh, capacity and potential here, which I, I think you'll find is, is maybe a lot greater than, than you might have expected. And that bodes, I, I believe, very well for this project. And indeed, this, this really could be uh, <laughs> a more ideal place to do this, to do this than, than you might have uh, at first thought. Not that we don't have technological challenges here. <laughs> okay, that was it. So, yes, uh, the title of my talk there, or as we, we call it now, uh, Polynesia First, and specifically uh, French Polynesia. <laughs> so here, I'll, I'll talk a little bit about, uh, uh, we heard yesterday uh, President Macron invited American climate scientists to come to France. Uh, I have news for you, Mr. President, we're already here. <laughs> and uh, the migration, I won't say invasion, the migration has begun. Uh, it began in 1985 when uh, a guy called Mr. Richard Gump donated 33 acres, about 15 hectare of his land on Morea to the University of California and specifically to the, to the Berkeley campus to operate. So uh, the station has uh, research facilities, residences. We have have, have people living there, at least for short terms. And uh, we heard yesterday also the importance of community. And since uh, 2002, we've established a, a community, a cultural center, dedicated that. It's run by a community-based organization, Te Puatitia, local organization. Uh, this presentation is going on its own, so I have to speak a little quicker. Um, and we're located here on the north shore of Morea. Uh, as you can see, the University of California on one side, and this is an unusual island in that we have two international research facilities. The CREOB, and, and director of CREOB, Serge Plan, is going to talk after me. We have a close collaboration, and indeed these two facilities focus largely on coral reefs. Uh, the CREOB, since 1971, has been uh, studying coral reefs here, making Maria one of the longest uh, continuously studied coral reefs anywhere in the world, and uh, Serge coordinates uh, through CREOB the France's uh, Center of Excellence for Coral Reef uh, Research. And more recently, New Kid on the Block, uh, the, the Berkeley station there, we Gump station hosts now uh, the US National Science Foundation since 2004, only coral reef in its long-term ecological research network, which are 25 sites that the US government National Science Foundation funds to study for many decades to understand how they're responding to, to global change and also the local uh, stresses that are, that are now on these environments. So it's really a, an international hub for understanding coral reefs and their relationship to climate change. So, so I think uh, President Macron's uh, invitation, uh, we have a great prototype of this international collaboration here in, in French Polynesia already. Uh, we also have uh, access to uh, Morea is obviously a high island with the importance of atolls. We have a new facility, a research facility, uh, that's available to us on the private island of Tetiaroa, an atoll just off the coast of Tahiti and Morea. Uh, and this, this uh, I don't have much time to talk about it, but this is a very fascinating example also for the floating island project because I think uh, Tetiaroa, through the Brando Resort and Pacific Beachcomber, who've really built a new community out on this atoll using cutting edge technologies and really a demonstration of, of what the circular economy uh, could be. So I think this is a, an excellent prototype and something hopefully you'll learn more about. Uh, next to Morea, of course, we have the Creole and Gump Station on Tahiti. Looking across there to Tahiti, there are four institutes, research institutes, two national French institutes, uh, IRD and IFREMER, uh, the University of French Polynesia, the largest uh, research and educational institution here, 
and the Institut Louis Maladé, which is a biomedical research institute of the government of French Polynesia. So together we work very closely, increasingly closely, as a collaboration, as a consortium or a network. Uh, the importance of the internet has been mentioned several times already, and we've, uh, with uh, the French Polynesian government and OPT, and thanks to the Honotua cable that now connects us to Hawaii, uh, thank you, um, <laughs> we, uh, we now have uh, access to very high bandwidth for research and educational uh, purposes. And linking through the University of Hawaii, this connects us to uh, the Pacific Research Platform, which is uh, <laughs> on the west coast of the United States, so a very high access to high performance computing facilities, and from there to uh, the French Research and Education Network, Europe and, and the international research education networks. So French Polynesia is very connected. We have super access, at least in, in the society islands. Um, and thanks to the government and OPT, we also now have, are able to use that capacity uh, for research and educational purposes. So Mark uh, Collins called me up uh, in September last year and said, hey, Neil, I've got some people you really should meet. Uh, and here they are, they came over. I was leaving the next day, but they came over and we had, a, we had an interesting afternoon and I presented some of the work that we're doing on Morea, and I think it was along these lines of uh, island research, uh, sustainable, sustainability science, and systems thinking. This is really, you know, we're on these small islands, we take a whole system approach, but we study, study them in, in a lot of detail. Because basically the, 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 real, the island we're increasingly having to study now as scientists is this one, island Earth. So humans now are having such an impact on, on this island, our, our common island home, that we really have to understand our relationship with the environment because we can't ignore it anymore. We, the, the earth essentially has become a garden for us. We need to tend it. We can't pretend we don't have any impact. So we have to learn how to do that smartly. And we have to learn very fast because we're hurting it uh, and we won't survive in this garden much longer if we carry on the way we're behaving today. But it's a very big, complex garden. So with a lot of humility, we're trying to understand. Humility, yes, but we have to understand it because we, we have the technology uh, to do it a lot of damage. So our approach, for example, that you have to study the planet now as an entire system. And when astronauts first went to the moon, the most significant thing was looking back, seeing the Earth. It's called the overview effect, recognizing it is this island floating in space and that it is an interconnected system with basically the sun's energy is the only real connection. So we have to study the planet. We can't study things just here on Tahiti or Morea and fully understand what the future holds for us. We need to look at what's happening around in the Pacific Ocean and processes that are playing out on a global scale. But what matters to us is what happens here locally. What does that mean finally for us? And also what happens here locally and what we do in aggregate feeds back up to the global system. So we, we need to understand both scales. And this is the huge scientific challenge, how do we connect large-scale processes with the local-scale processes? So for example, if you want to understand the impact of rising carbon dioxide concentrations in the atmosphere, and that's being absorbed by the ocean, leading to ocean acidification, we need to study things at a global scale. But if we want to know what that means for a coral reef, say the ones here, we have to study the calcification process at the level of the genome and the molecule and we have to look at the variation between different species of coral, for example, how will they, they respond to, they'll respond in different ways. So we have to study things at the molecular scale. So from planet down and genome up. So that's putting it mildly a vast, vast challenge. <coughs> Our approach is to use model systems, just as it's done in health research, biomedical research, focusing on C. elegans, yeast, and, and fruit fly. We need to focus on some model ecosystems that we can really understand, model places, and we can really understand how they function in detail and connect them to the planetary processes. So Morea, these small islands are, of, we believe, ideal model ecosystems for study. Uh, I won't go into detail here, but for example, very few places in the world have a complete species list, which is your thing is pretty much basic starting point, but you'd be surprised probably how few, even intensively studied places, have a complete list of the species present. An international collaboration, including some in this room, led this. So we have that such a list now for Morea, but 
that's just one little twig on the tree of life. The vast majority of diversity in, in the world is microbial. So in Morea, we have a list now of the animals and plants, and we're working on the microbes. But even for a small island like this, that's a massive challenge. But we have these amazingly new technologies now, uh, essentially like the new microscopes of, for sequencing, where we can actually start to look at this new world. It is an entirely new world to discover. A new age of exploration has indeed begun. So we have this roadmap of how to build a model ecosystem, describe all the parts, at least the biological parts, that includes genome sequencing everything, every species at, at some point, including humans, and including the ecosystems that we carry around inside us. Look at then the interactions among all of those parts, how do they fit together, this is sort of network science. Um, and then uh, develop models, and to do this we have to build, uh, we have to have scientific understanding across all of the sciences, more or less, from environmental, ecological, the history, the archaeology, where do all the species come from, the climate history, uh, up to uh, what are humans doing today, the social, economic uh, uh, processes and forces acting on these places. So that is not only a big scientific challenge, if, if all these sciences are going to work together to address how is this system functioning, this is a massive science in what's now known as data, data science, or big data. And it's really a question of integration. How do we integrate all these different data types, models together in a platform that enables us to ask interesting questions and get useful answers back? So we've launched this program called the Morea Idea, Island Digital Ecosystem Avatar. It's basically the goal here is to, to build use-oriented simulations, called avatars, of entire social ecological systems. We start with these small islands like Tetiro, Morea, and eventually maybe Tahiti. Um, and the question is, what will the state, or if you like, the health of the system be under alternate scenarios of environmental change and human activities? So it's a scenario-based planning tool, but based on a really deep understanding of at least one system and how it connects to the rest of the world. And the approach is one we've stolen, really, from biomedical research, uh, promoted by Leroy Hood here, are the P4 uh, health approach, which is personalized. Every place is different, just like every human is different. Uh, predictive, can we predict something about the future? If we can, we can prevent negative outcomes, we can intervene before it's too late, saving a lot of money, but also leading to better outcomes. And it must be participatory. We need to share information with other people in other places to learn, um, but also we have to take responsibility about the places we live, just as we have to take responsibility out of our personal health. So you've got to be involved, everyone. So that includes the community, scientists, politicians, entrepreneurs, everybody. And that fits, I think, very well with the spirit of this conference. <clears throat> so the last couple of years, we've had a lot of workshops. It takes a lot of workshops, including with community, as well as different scientists and technologists. I just got back last week from Redmond, uh, a meeting at Microsoft. And you can read about the goals and some of the plans in, in some of these, uh, the scientific literature. So when I met the Seasteading Institute, I presented all this and thought, well, this is pretty ambitious. You know, we're trying to build these islands in silico and have them really kind of represent what the real world is. And they said, oh, yeah, that's really interesting, but we, we're actually going to build them. <laughs> so it's like, take out, well, you build a model, we're going to hit 3D print, and we want to build these islands. So that's, uh, that's taking it to another level, but why not? So we're uh, very happy to, to collaborate on this. Uh, to study the existing islands and, and, uh, and maybe, hopefully, build some new ones. So uh, just to finish off here, I'll say um, in, in March, we got together a small workshop, uh, mainly involving uh, the local institutions here. Um, and the goal was really to see how this project might benefit uh, existing island communities, so some immediate impact for, for French Polynesia, catalyzing innovation in, in the food, energy, waste, and environment sectors, uh, developing applications and strategies for hazards and associated with sea level rise, and really trying to build these smart and connected communities of the future, which will involve connection between land and sea, because the ocean is 70% of the world, and it has massive potential, which we haven't even started to exploit. We've just been trashing it. But there's a lot of potential sitting there waiting for us to get smart and, and use it and work with the ocean, not against it. So the scope of this workshop uh, we, we held was uh, about science, technology, environment, health, humanities, including social science. But it was not about political, legal, or cultural issues. 
uh, that was out of the scope. Those, those are clearly critical for, the, for this project, but we were focusing really on the science and technology side. Um, and the objectives were introduced in the Seasteading Institute to the local institutions um, to assess the technological, environmental, and sociological impacts and, and opportunities, and to explore specific research and development uh, opportunities for French Polynesia associated with this project. So the six institutions I mentioned earlier were invited. Uh, four of them were able to participate at, at short notice. We had some representatives from the government and, of course, from the Seasteading Institute. And we spent a really productive few days uh, discussing these issues. And one of the findings was that this project matches perfectly with French Polynesia's research and innovation framework. You can, you can see the, the, the titles there. So a very good fit. Um, and yes, there's indeed a lot of potential for collaboration uh, between the local organizations and, and the Seasteading Institute. So where we're at right now is we're putting together a, a steering committee and an MOU, which we've got a draft of, and we're running that by the, the local institutions to see, and Seasteading Institute to, to sign that very soon, I hope. Um, and I'll just finish with, you know, the goal, I think, is how can we weave a nurturing fabric, uh, a cyber, cyber physical, uh, fabric that couples marine and terrestrial systems um, because I think we need those if we're going to have these thriving coastal communities including islands of course are the ultimate coastal communities uh, and their, their ecosystems and this really is the hope for sustainable development for the for the planet so uh, thank you and that's it Thank you. Thank you.